This is the first in a series of videos where I'll be working through the creation of this scene from design, modeling, UV mapping, texturing, and animation. If this content interests you, but you have no patience, check out my Udemy courses for in-depth ArcViz courses. Use the link in the description below for a discount. Hit the subscribe button under this video and use the bell icon for notifications. Also, hit that thumbs up so this video reaches more people. In this video, we'll be getting the free 3D creation software Blender and setting up the interface. That way, you know the settings I'll be using during the series. To get Blender, we can open a web browser and in the address bar, type blender.org. This will open up the Blender website. Click Download Blender for the latest stable release of the software used in production. You can get your copy here. Blender is available for the operating systems Windows, Mac, and Linux. Select the operating system and the download will begin. I'm using a Windows desktop and the installation will be standard for each operating system. That will begin the download. So now I can click Save. That will take a few moments to download and I can speed it up and move on to dragging in the file browser where the Blender installer downloaded. We can double click to begin the install. Click Next. I need to read, then accept the agreement. Click Next now. Here you can choose a location. The default will be fine, so I can click Next, then Install. Then I need to approve this action. That will now install Blender. Once complete, click Finish. There is now an app icon on the desktop, so I'll double click this to begin. That will open the default Blender with the splash screen. If this is the first time you're opening Blender, the splash screen will look like this. These are initial settings that can be updated in preferences at any time. Here you can set the language, Next, you can set the shortcuts to be from the previous Blender 2.7 or industry compatible will be similar to Maya or Max. For this video series, we can leave this set to Blender. The next setting, Select Width, can be left or right. Previous releases to 2.8 were right select by default. However, left is industry standard and works well. Also, Spacebar will play pause. The final setting lets you change the theme. Choose from a preset here and change the look of the interface. I can leave mine set to the default Blender dark theme. All these settings can be updated in user preferences at any time and we'll be taking a look at these in future videos. Now we can click next. This will be the default splash screen that greets you when opening Blender. Here the file type can be selected. We will be using general and this is also the default type in the background here. The manual is available or the Blender website and the credits. The release notes of the version are here and if you want to support Blender's development, you can click through and do that from here. To begin, we can just click into the scene. To open preferences, come up to the edit menu and down to preferences. We can begin up top in the interface tab. Feel free to leave the default settings, but some you will find very useful. If I click and drag the resolution scale, my text on screen increases. This will make it easier for you to follow the videos and only increase your own if it improves your experience. If you change a setting and want the default, then hover the cursor and press the backspace key to reset. I can left click into the field and set this to 1.3. I find this size works well and should be easier to follow along. The remaining default settings are fine here, so we can move on to the input tab. Blender recommends using a three button mouse when working in the software. If you don't have a three button mouse, you can enable this option here. It's called emulate three button mouse. That way you can use the alt key in conjunction with the left mouse button. Only check that on if you have a two button mouse. The middle mouse button lets you rotate in the scene and it's very difficult to work in Blender without one. The next tab is the navigation tab. Here we can enable orbit around selection. This gives you greater control when orbiting around the selected object 
in object mode or around part of the selected objects when in edit mode. Really important setting that allows you get in close and work more accurately. The second option I want to disable here is auto perspective. This setting changes the view to perspective after you leave an orthographic view. I prefer to remain in an orthographic view and manually switch to perspective when I need to. Feel free to leave this at default, it's just a setting I like to disable. The final setting in navigation is zoom to mouse position. So when zooming in close to an area, the position of the cursor will be the target. Let's move on to the system tab. Here you can increase the number of undo steps. This will lead to higher memory usage. 256 is the max this value can be set, and I like to set it to 100. That gives me plenty of buffer to experiment when working in Blender. That's it for the settings. Blender automatically saves any time you make changes in preferences. That is once the save preferences checkbox is enabled in here. Now the next time you open Blender, these changes will have been saved, and you won't need to update them again. We can close preferences by clicking the X here. Make sure and save your file often. Also, save your files incrementally.